Let's start off with Michael Boganowski, the safety out of Junction City, Kansas. The headline here, I think, is that he's kind of got a tough decision. It's either say no to dad and hometown school in mm-hmm. K-State or maybe go to OU where you've got the SEC, probably bigger NFL future. And this is my personal opinion. I don't know anything about this, but maybe it's a similar Peyton Bowen situation where maybe his heart is, I want to go play for OU, but uh, I know parents are dragging me elsewhere. So kind of a conundrum there for, for Boganowski. Well, I think that's, I mean, you summed it up pretty well, Adam. I think that's kind of what it boils down to. Do you choose to follow your heart and go with your gut to go play at the University of Oklahoma, play for Brent Venables in the SEC, you know, big boy football? Um, I think that the NIL capacity, even though Oklahoma is doing a tremendous job and, you know, they're probably allocating some of those funds elsewhere on the defensive side of the football. But, you know, I, I definitely do see the opportunity that he has in front of him, you know, you know, being less than an hour away uh, from uh, Manhattan where he can play. He can be the hometown hero. He can go play for, you know, the coach that recruited his dad uh, a few years, you know, a, a while back. But, yeah, I, I totally see that. I do think that this is one where, the visit that Michael and his family had in Norman over the weekend with the Sooners under the stars, I think that any any hesitation that he and his family might have had about Oklahoma, it kind of sounds like the coaching staff put that to bed and kind of kind of laid out a pretty pretty amazing pitch to this kid that hey, this is this is definitely the place for you. Uh, we're turning this thing around. We're building something special, and you're the next guy uh, to come in and you know c- carry this carry the baton. Uh, for for this football program, but we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Um, I like Oklahoma though in this one. I do by a hair at that point. I think Kansas might be the wild card situation there. Of like, well, I'm not going to pick Dad's choice. I'm not going to pick my choice. That's I'll something. Pick this ground of Kansas. That's something I just don't understand whatsoever. And again, we, we can always talk about you know blue bloods. You know this this team is better. This program is better. That is something that I just simply do not understand. If you're a top two three hundred player in the country. You're the number one overall player in the state of Kansas. If your goal is to play for championships and put yourself in a a position to go to the NFL, to me, that's an absolute no-brainer between those three schools. I think so. I I agree with you, but I think this could be a different situation where you've got dad pulling you one direction. I I don't, by any account, think that his dad is similar to Peyton Bowen's mom or anybody else that has really strong opinions. I, I think there's probably a good relationship there, but it's just hard to say no to dad sure. and, and the school right around the road and probably all the friends that he's with that are K-State fans. So mm-hmm. uh, I think that's a tough decision. I think that's why you're seeing it lengthen out because we thought maybe a decision might've been made last month, two months ago, potentially uh, at that point. But I think it's just <clears> hard to say no to all those people around you. So I think that's probably a good sign that OU is probably where he'd like to go. It's just like, how do you, how do you make that announcement? To everyone on the on the flip wants to, you to be yeah, I mean, on the flip side though, as long as this, rec- this recruitment has gone on for both Oklahoma and Kansas State with Michael Boganowski, it kind of says a lot the fact that here we are, August first, and he still hasn't made a commitment. If he truly wanted to be at Kansas State, just a little bit, uh, you know, just a little bit up the road, play the hometown hero. Uh, story then kind of feels like that was something that would have already been done by now so i kind of like i kind of see where your head's at to where it's the easy decision it is the easy decision it is the easy yeah. decision uh next one here adam this is a this is part of the 2024 class but this kid was on campus and that is four-star offensive lineman grant bricks and adam it kind of sounds like oh you made their last impression the most memorable and maybe the most powerful yet Nebraska got the last visit um, over the weekend and is a uh, much closer uh, destination to home. Yeah. He's probably like maybe an hour and a half away from Lincoln. He's just on the other side of, of the river uh, in Iowa there. So not too far away. We've heard the, uh, you know, proximity to home factor come up a lot with Grant Bricks, but very similar to Boganowski, a guy that we thought probably would have had a decision by now at this point, but it continues to drag out. Mm -hmm. So I think there's some similarities there of like, yes, OU is the right place to be. They're going to develop me into an NFL, um, you know, offensive lineman. Uh, I haven't kept up with Iowa. I'm not sure why Iowa's not on in on him because I think that would probably be a really great fit as well. So something must have happened there that totally took them off the board early on. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like K-State's kind of out of the picture, and I think this is kind of an OU-Nebraska battle. Um, and so, again, it's another scenario where it's like you're not that far from from Omaha and probably a lot of other Nebraska fans around you, and you're probably wanting to play a little bit closer to home for everybody that uh, you know that's that's in your hometown. But can he say no to all of that and come down to OU, which mm-hmm. is probably going to be the better fit for him long-term because of the NFL-proven track record there? Uh, we'll see, but... 
as we talked about on last week's episode, a guy that I think it's not it's not make or break for this offensive line class because you never know what some of these guys are going to turn out to be, but he could be the headliner in my opinion. So um, you'd really like to add that piece to your class. Oh, if you're able to gain the commitment of Graham Bricks and he's able to, you know, sign his commitment letter and play for Oklahoma, I mean, I mean, he's by far and away the best offensive lineman in this class for Bill Beanbow. Um, so, yeah, you're talking about a guy who's currently a four-star. If he has a successful senior campaign, is able to really turn some heads even more so than he already has. Maybe he starts to, you know, uh, approach that five-star status. But, yeah, this would be a really, really good gift for Oklahoma considering this summer has kind of been – I don't want to say disappointing, but it's maybe been a little bit underwhelming for uh, especially, you know, if you go back four or five months ago, some of the guys that we thought that we were seriously in consideration for um, that have chosen, you know, to take their talents elsewhere. So I think if if Bill Beanbow is able to get Grant Bricks on board, I think that that is a very, very solid offensive line class. And he could be one of your pillars on that offensive line here in the next two to three years when Oklahoma's playing uh, in the SEC. This next defensive player really came down to OU and Missouri. Of course, we're talking about Michael Patterson McDonald. He just committed <laughs> to OU uh, yesterday. Uh, the safety there, a good friend of David Stone. So mm-hmm. uh, take that, Mizzou, I think is, is kind of the headline there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully the first of a couple couple more recruiting victories over the uh, Missouri Tigers. But yeah, this is a really good kid, four-star defensive back uh, out of the state of Oklahoma. When you, uh, we talk about it time and time again, Adam, keeping the best players in your state at home, rocking the crimson and cream. This is a guy who, when you turn on this kid's film, and even though the measurables, yeah, they've got him listed at 5'10", about 185 pounds. To me, when I watch this kid's film, he reminds me a lot of Reggie Pearson, where he's a little bit undersized, but he plays fearless. He, he's not afraid to come up there, lay the hit on you. He plays really well up in the box, uh, can cover receivers all across the field. I think that this is a really good get for Oklahoma, You know, not, not just because of how talented that he is as a player, but you're you're continuing to get these same group of guys that have grown up friends that grew up playing together. Talking about Xavier Robinson, now you've got Michael Patterson, McDonald, and you know we're just uh, just a few more weeks away uh, for the commitment of five star defensive lineman David Stone, who is very very close with that bunch. Um, he's going to be announcing his commitment, I think, uh, coming up on August 26. So the fact that you're able to get a couple of David Stone's really, really close friends and kind of like what we were talking about with Jaden Jackson when he committed, and we've had people DM saying, well, do you think that, you know, the the addition of Michael Patterson McDonald, does that, you know, does that play well in Oklahoma's favor in terms of landing David Stone? I think it's probably a pretty safe bet that it, it it's going to go a long way. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to follow. Uh, August is shaping up to be one hell of a month for Oklahoma. Yeah, David Stone is who we had next on the list here. And he's a guy that just announced his commitment date for August 26th. Uh, going to be playing St. Joseph's Academy uh, on that particular game. It's going to be on ESPN. I don't know if you know this, Tyler. St. Joseph's is actually where uh, Samaj Jones is quarterback. So Ooh. that could have been really cool if uh, if Samaj Jones had committed to OU. would have had two OU commits potentially in that sure. game. Um, it'll still be interesting. I think that's a, a high-level quarterback, probably a pretty good team that uh, we're going to be able to see David Stone match up against. You know what's interesting, though, with his, his recruitment is he announced, I don't know when it was, Thursday last week, Friday last week, his commitment date. Mm-hmm. Been pretty quiet since then. Mm-hmm. And I kind of think that tells you something because a lot of people have come up with all sorts of rumors, um, scenarios that might happen or play out with David Stone. He announces his commitment date and it's all kind of like nothing. Mm-hmm. No, no one wants to ruin his, his commitment by putting in a bunch of forecasts at that point necessarily, but no one's coming up with these crazy scenarios of how he might commit to Miami or mm-hmm. Michigan State or A&M really. It's kind of just... Kind of just quiet. Well, I, think part, I think that tells you something. And I think part of that is because the current forecasts and crystal balls that are in for this kid are clearly pointing in one direction, and that is the University of Oklahoma. So um, I think that this is a guy who, as much as he enjoys the recruiting process, and of course you should. You're the number one, number two you know, defensive lineman in the country. You're a five-star for a reason. Soak it up. But it also kind of feels like he's been playing this game for so long that I think he's ready for this to come to an end. He knows what he wants to do. He's got the date set. Now it's just a matter of time, you know, for him to get ready for his senior season over the next three to four weeks. And he can make his uh, decision here on August 26th and the rest will be history. Caden Durham, a guy that grew up in the Oklahoma city area, knows Michael Patterson, McDonald knows David stone, knows Xavier Robinson out of Carl Albert LSU trying to keep that Oklahoma city native 
from returning home, trying to keep them in the boot there. Sounds like LSU may have a slight edge at this point. Yeah, I think, I mean, uh, make no mistake about it. I mean, Caden Durham made the trip up to the boot over the weekend. I think that the um, the track side of things has made this uh, kind of swing a little bit more in favor of, of LSU, you know, as of late. But let's not forget, uh, DeMarco Murray is still in Norman. And we all know the relationship that, that he has with that kid. We all know about Caden Durham's, you know, relationship with, you know, Michael Patterson, McDonald, you know, David Stone, you know, growing up playing with those guys. He is, he's got a 405 tattoo on his body uh, for, for God's sake. So again, not, not really anything out, but make no mistake about it. LSU and Brian Kelly, they have done a tremendous job swinging the momentum that was, you know, so heavily leaning towards Oklahoma uh, from what's felt like the last two or three months. LSU's, LSU's done a really, really good job as of late in the last week or two. And uh, this is going to be something that um, it's going to come down all the way to the very end, which is kind of interesting because they've already got two commitments in the boat for running back with Taylor Tatum and Xavier Robinson. And from everything that is, you know, going on all over social media, some conversations behind the scenes, Kind of feels like uh, Oklahoma is making a run and making a uh, pretty positive impact on another running back in the state of Oklahoma, uh, and that's Andy Bass. Yeah, he's a guy that currently has kind of one of those PWO preferred walk-on offers, but his NIL will cover his his you know uh, tuition and, and fees yeah. there. So it, it's interesting because I don't think he would be a replacement for Caden Durham. I kind of think Andy Bass probably won't get a scholarship offer if Caden Durham goes to LSU. So I'm not viewing him that way. I think he's one that if you're OU, if you're OU, you're trying to pull him in as that PWO and that Gavin Freeman. I know there's a lot of similarities there There with Heritage Hall, but there's a success story and there's a pathway for you as Andy Bass to say, hey, you're coming in. You're not going to have to pay anything out of pocket because of NIL at this point. You're going to be have an opportunity to earn that scholarship anyway, because it still is meaningful to say, hey, I'm on Mm -hmm. scholarship. Um, and then he's a guy that I think can play, he can play so many different positions. Like you find a way to get him on the field. He makes an impact for you. Gavin Freeman's already done that. Um, and he's a guy that could potentially have a bigger role this year. So we'll see there, but I think he's one that OU will probably take regardless because he is that PWO situation. Sure. Sure. How about next? A guy that, uh, maybe isn't as big on OU's radar. Fans probably don't care that much. Williams Winery, <laughs> a guy that... <laughs> We're on about twist 34 out of 100 or so that are going to happen between now and when he actually commits. And then probably another 100 after that, after uh, he commits to when he actually signs. Um, You know, he got grounded last week. It's kind of crazy to think about. This guy could probably snap me in half, but he's still 16, 17 years old. You know, that's what teenagers are. So it's kind of good to know that, hey, you know, that's, that's still happening out there. But so many rumors of, you know, is he, did he make a, a midweek trip to Missouri? Is Georgia offering a bigger bag? You know, what's OU's situation? Because we all thought, okay, he's, he's, he's going to come down to OU with all his teammates last week, and that didn't come to fruition. And now his commitment date's kind of more up in the air. It sounds like it got moved back another week. This 14th. Is the second time it's been moved. So just a, a number of twists and turns, and I feel like there's a whole lot more coming that uh, we still haven't seen yet. Well, it's just a day in the life life of recruiting a five star defensive lineman, much less the number one overall player in the country. Um, and I think that this is definitely one, Adam, where when when you're the number one overall player and you're the number one overall player, you're not a quarterback, but you're at a position of such high value and it's so hard to get uh, the, those big boys on the interior defensive line. Um, which, and again, from everything that we know, um, Williams Winery, you know, he is going to be playing a little bit more out on the edge. But this is a situation where what Brent Venables has said from the time he got to Oklahoma, how they were going to be a coaching staff that valued relationships over everything else, and how they were going to bring kids in that you know shared the same values, uh, had the ability to you know they they buy into Oklahoma's culture, they love what they're doing. I think that this is going to essentially be a situation where. Very, very similar to Boganowski and Grant Bricks, where you're weighing, okay, do I choose to stay at maybe a a less inferior school, but the NIL opportunities there, being the hometown kid, having an opportunity to play day one, is that something that you're going to possibly go with, or do you choose to go to a place like Oklahoma who – You've got the rich tradition. You've got the program that's going to be coming into the SEC. You've got Brent Venables. You you know his track record. You know Todd Bates' track record going into the you know putting players into the NFL. 
And make no mistake about it, even though Missouri does have a heavier bag, Oklahoma, by no stretch of the imagination, is, is you know, uh, light in the pockets when it comes to this kid's recruitment. So it's just a situation that it's going to come down to the very last day. And a lot of people on all three or four sides, whether you're OU, Georgia, Missouri, Tennessee, everybody thinks they knows what's going to happen. But this is just something where I'm going to have to see it to believe it because we've been through this same thing with David Hicks uh, and so many other defensive tackles that we thought were going to come to Oklahoma, but we get down to the very, very end and you know they decide to go elsewhere. But um, ultimately, this is a huge month for Oklahoma and – from everything that we have heard from people that are, you know, having those conversations, people that are in the weeds, it still sounds like Oklahoma is in really good standing with Williams Wanary. And it's just a matter of getting to that commitment date, pressing all the right buttons. And then the biggest thing for me of all, Adam, with every single one of these recruits, especially the Stones and the Durham's and the Tatum's, you gotta win football games this fall. That's the biggest thing. You can sell whatever you want. You can uh, promote your program as much as you want. You can drop an NIL bag. Oklahoma's got to go out and win, you know, nine, ten football games this fall uh, to keep this uh, to keep this class intact. Yeah, you're going to be continually recruiting Winery, even if he does commit to OU sure. on August 14th. Something interesting to kind of keep an eye on there. I just pulled up Missouri's class. I think they're ranked uh, 54th according to On Three. They really don't have. I mean, they have a couple guys that are ranked top 300, depending on what service you look look at. So they don't really have, by, by far and away, I mean, Winnery's the number one player in the nation, but there's no one even remotely close to that in their class. So no. Something to kind of keep an eye on there um, and probably a, a part of that consideration there. Well, and about, one of the things too, Adam, that social media has just made recruiting that much crazier, it's the fact that recruit the, that offers get put out on Twitter as soon as they happen and you know you've got you've got fan bases you know no matter what team you're affiliated with that are trying to dissect every single word every single graphic every single image that is put out there and one of the things that has been you know um you know very uh favorable if you're one of those conspiracy you know guys that's part of ou it's the fact that missouri has made a couple of offers to guys at the same position at williams one mm-hmm. area over the last you know 48 to 72 hours so you pair that with the fact that eli drinkowitz kind of is on the height on the hot seat if he doesn't win you know six seven games maybe even eight there's a very realistic chance that uh, mizzou with ou and texas coming into the conference with the, the new TV rights, the new media deals, they do not want Missouri to, to take a, even more of a backseat than they already are in this conference. So just something to keep in mind. There's a lot of variables coming into play here, and it's not just simply a matter of what, what school uh, do I want to play football at. We did get a commitment today, uh, something on Twitter yeah. that came out. Brendan Zerberg, uh, the uh, quarterback that was committed to Northwestern and Syracuse briefly, mm-hmm. uh, is now committed to OU. He's the second quarterback of the 2024 class. Three star out of Alliance, Ohio. I think the headline here is regardless of you know whether he might see the field at OU or what his star ranking is, exactly what the doctor ordered here. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the it's the exact prescription that the doctor uh, assigned to to Oklahoma. And this is a guy that yes, in a perfect world, is he going to ever see the field at Oklahoma? No, not when you've already got Jackson Arnold on campus. You've got Malik, uh, you know Michael Hawkins, Kevin Spare in 2025, as talented as those three guys are. But this is a situation where you you need to have depth at that position group, not just for games, but also for practice as well. You know, um, being able to keep those quarterbacks' arms fresh and, you know, be able to, you know, throw hundreds and hundreds of balls to receivers, you know, throughout the course of a camp or a fall practice. Um, But, yeah, this is a really, really good get for Oklahoma. you got to give props to, you know, Jeff Levy uh, and this coaching staff. that They saw that he he might not necessarily have been on their roster a month or two ago, but with all of the – the, the shit show that is the Northwestern football program right now with all the turnover and the investigations going on, they saw that as an opportunity where this is a kid that is very, very talented and he fills a need for Oklahoma at a, at a position of great importance. So this is a good gift for Jeff Levy. Yeah. You, the alternative is you try to get someone from the transfer portal that probably didn't play at their previous school. So I'd rather – find someone that as a freshman is going to come in committed. They're going to have a drive. Like they already know what they're signing up for. So yeah, I, I, I think I'd rather have that than I don't want to constantly throw this guy under the bus, but Davis Bevel, for example, like, 
Um, you know, at, at that point, you know, if, if a guy has been in college for two or three years, they haven't played, they're looking to transfer and they're willing to come to OU and that, knowing that, yeah, they're probably going to sit on the bench as a backup. I, you know, I just wonder how much they're going to make everyone else around them better. Just be and naturally, like that's the situation that they're doing. Whereas a freshman comes in, they're going to say, Hey, you know, I'm this insurmountable mountain. I'm going to, I'm going to climb it anyway. So, uh, I like that particular situation there. How about a guy that uh, did visit, uh, did make it to campus this past weekend, was Danny Okoye, a guy mm. that, by all accounts, you know, there's a long way to go in his recruitment. <clears throat> He's got some big dogs in competition there, LSU, Texas, Alabama. But really, as it stands today, OU might have one of the best pitches and maybe as good a shot as anybody. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's kind of been fun to follow um, the recruitment of this kid, you know, over the last three to four months. It kind of felt like Oklahoma was the odd man out. You know, when this you look at what Danny Okoye, um, some of the visits that he's taken, some of the teams that he's really high on. I know that Tennessee, Texas and, you know, coming off of an Alabama visit a week ago, anytime that you sit down in a room with Nick Saban and he's able to lay out, you know, all the skins on his wall, lay out his track record, what he can do for you as a player in, in what is the uh, the Alabama factory that just, <laughs> that just uh, you know, sends people to the NFL left and right. But I do think that this is one where there's two things that are going to go into this. It's the continuing to build that relationship with him over the next two to three months, but it's also the fact that if Oklahoma is able to, <clears throat> in the month of August, if you can close on David Stone, if you can close on Williams Winery, if you're Danny Okoye and you've got those two other bad dudes that are going to be part of this class, why would you not want to link up and come play with these guys? Because both of those guys are going to demand at least one, probably two guys to block them on any given down. So if you're Danny Okoye, why would you not want to come up here and have the opportunity to play alongside those guys for Todd Bates, for Miguel Chavis? Um, Oklahoma, they still have a long way to go in this recruitment. Uh, from everything that is being talked about, but they're definitely putting themselves uh, in a good position as we sit here uh, to you know the beginning of August. I think Okoye is probably a little bit underrated. I, I don't expect his rating to change much because of the competition level that he's playing, but I think he's he's probably should be ranked a lot higher, and maybe by the end of his college career, we'll we'll see that. Well, he was deadlifting. Sure. He was deadlifting seven hundred pounds over the weekend, you yeah. know, with just chiseled. So there's your length and girth report for the for tonight's episode. Yeah, Oklahoma. They, they want Danny Okoye. You, you do whatever you can to get this kid's services because I think um, he's kind of a diamond in the rough. Not too many people are as high on him as Miguel Chavis or you know some of the other you know teams that are vying for his services. But yeah, that would be a tremendous gift for Danny Okoye. Much like the next guy we're going to talk about along the defensive line, and that is five-star Louisiana product Dominic McKinley. Adam. Oklahoma in a good position here. Are they still playing catch up? Man, it, it's it's kind of this is such a strange recruitment because Danny Okoye, Williams Winery, David Stone, everyone, you know, oh yeah, OU's got the lead. OU's gonna land that guy. Dominic McKinley is the guy that you continue to hear good things about. Like OU's is in mm-hmm. good a position as anybody, and LSU probably has ground to make up, is what you kind of hear the common theme. It's 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 been the same for the past couple of weeks or so. But yet at at no point does anyone say, we're landing Dominic McKinley. It's always, it's LSU till it isn't. And so I kind of think that's that's just hilarious. It's, I don't know, OU fan PTSD from past recruiting battles or knowing that, hey, this is a Louisiana kid and LSU doesn't lose those guys. But at this point, like LSU is probably running third, maybe fourth, mm-hmm. depending on who you ask, mm-hmm. uh, behind mm-hmm. OU, behind Texas, behind Texas A&M. I don't know what order those those three teams are, are really sorted in at that point. But I think you like the the mold of Dominic McKinley and his family and how that fits really well with a Todd Bates type uh, of character. Now, I don't know about, you know, the coaches at those other schools and how well they fit or not, but for sure at OU, it fits. It's just, hey, how long can you win this? You know, can you run in this race? Because it's definitely going to be a marathon of guy that probably goes into – December, Maybe he January. signs on early signing day, but he doesn't announce until yeah. a All American type game. Well, you hit the nail on the head, Adam. It's it's Todd Bates continuing to push all the right buttons with this kid's recruitment, and this is going to be, you know, this is going to be a dogfight with Texas, with Texas A and M, with you know, even though LSU <laughs> might be running, you know, a, a distant fourth or maybe even a third. Anytime that you've got a local kid in the state of Louisiana that grew up an hour, maybe an hour and a half away from Baton Rouge. Um, 
I don't know what it's going to take for LSU. I'm not sure if they're going to have to raid another children's hospital fund uh, in order to to get this kid's services. But um, make no mistake about it, until this kid signs, LSU is not out of it. But as it sits right now, I think this is a Red River battle, and uh, I, like, I like what Todd Bates is doing with this kid. Um, OU is sitting pretty right now. 